Well, hey friends and neighbors, this is Chuck out at Sheraton Park Farms. Welcome back to the farm. So, we've not done a video in a couple days because we've been working at a fever pitch around here. Uh, tomorrow is our very first Sheraton Park Farms pastured poultry processing class. We've got about 11 folks coming tomorrow to learn how to process their own chickens um, on their own farm or homestead, depending on you know the scale that they're doing at. We're going to teach them how to work through that process tomorrow. We're gonna to talk a little bit about just raising um, poultry on pasture to begin with. Also got a farm to table meal uh, plan. So come along, let's talk a little bit about the birds. Um, let's talk about our chicken processing facility. That's where we've been spending a lot of time over the past week is doing a bunch of upgrades. We got that thing um, really nice dialed in. I think it's gonna be a good experience for the folks that are coming out to join us. And we're gonna talk about the best part of the day the meal. Saunders working on a farm to table meal. Most of the, the ingredients were sourced either from right here on the farm or from farms that are really, really close to us uh, here in uh, in Southern Guilford County. So hang out with us for a little bit. Let's uh, show you what we got going on and uh, let's talk about processing some pasture poultry on your own farm. So here are, I guess, the stars of tomorrow's event. Um, these are a batch of Freedom Ranger Color Yield. Uh, these are the birds that we kind of transitioned to over the past year or so um, for a couple different reasons. We had some uh, bad luck with some Cornish Cross. And we had tried these birds and we've just been really, really happy with them. They forage really well. They grow nice. They're a little bit slower than the Cornish. The meat uh, flavor and texture is phenomenal. Um, and these birds are um, easy keepers. We have knock on wood very little loss with these birds they do really really well on pasture and in the brooder um, this is a group of straight run meaning that uh, we didn't request either roosters or hens we got whatever they sent us typically you'll get about a 50 50 ratio roosters to hens um, 54 originally in the batch i think we're at 49 right now um, one of which Sondra and i did have for supper one night uh, and it was uh, it was really good so these are the stars for tomorrow. Um, we're gonna take them off feed tonight. Um, we'll go ahead and pull the feeders out while I'm out here so that we've got some clean crops tomorrow whenever it's time to uh, actually do the processing. So uh, yeah, getting ready to put these birds in the freezer. All right, what are we eating tomorrow? Poke. And what else? <laughs> Green beans, my, uh, no, not mashed potatoes, uh, macaroni and cheese, a salad, all the stuff out of the garden, and rolls and strawberry shortcake. All right. Where'd all that stuff come from? Right around here. Right around here. You cooking? I am. <laughs> Don't see the joke. Yeah, let's see. We're spinning. So here's kind of the flow, and then we'll kind of show the, the upgrades that we've done inside the processing room here in just a second. We're gonna do kill, scald, and pluck out here like we've done in the past. There really isn't a whole lot of, I mean, it's kind of like a wheel. You really just can't get any better than what you got. Kill, scald, pluck here, and then those birds will go into a um, ice bath um, that is half in, half out of the building, just like we've done in the past, half in, half out of the building. So we can take those birds here, drop them in the ice tank, and then the folks that are inside can reach in and get them. They don't have to come back outside. And so that just creates that flow of those birds, um, kill, skull, pluck, ready to go in for evisceration. Now, <clears throat> inside is where we've made a lot of changes. Um, and if you've seen our videos on our chicken processing in the past, this was the this was the room to right here this was the room that we were working in and we were doing everything in this room and over here on this side there was a um a counter there was a wall here um, a sink hot water heater and some other stuff we have since taken all of that out and now we have opened this entire building up um from one end to the other so that we've got much more a, a lot more space and <clears throat> i think we've got a good flow down so let's talk a little bit about the flow um, and then we'll show the show some of the upgrades so again this is where the tank will be half in half out 
so the folks that are uh, inside of this rate can just reach in and grab that bird uh, and put it up on uh, one of these stainless tables that we've got. So we're able to source two, well actually we source more than two, but we've got two stainless tables here. These are evisceration tables and we have put uh, additional lights in. We got some nice LED lights. So we got plenty of light over the evisceration table. So identification of the anatomy, um, being able to make sure that you've got um, everything done that you need to get done. Got plenty of light there so that you can see exactly what you're doing. We've also plumbed um some water lines in so we've got four water lines hanging down with thumb valves uh, so that whenever you're eviscerating the chicken um, you've got uh, plenty of water there to rinse and do whatever you need to do with that additionally we've got a couple of the the uh, big trash cans we got one here and we got one back here on this side so that as folks are eviscerating they can drop the offal down in those trash cans and then they'll just be super easy to pick up we can take those outside uh, and dump the contents in the bucket on the tractor and then take that up and put it in the compost pile got a couple of drains here for our water um, and we just got them draining down into a couple of uh, buckets got that plumb to the outside we have positioned the um, water drain high enough so that we get um, uh, tissue skin or something like that down in the bucket it's going to work kind of like a septic system the solids will fall to the bottom and as the water rises we'll keep the water um, we'll keep the water out so that should work better for the uh, drain system before we had some sinks we had three sinks back here we can only have two people eviscerating at a time now we can do four uh, for the class tomorrow there will be an instructor and three students uh, at the evisceration station learning that piece and going through all that so much better um, working conditions here than what we've had in the past once those birds are eviscerated they're going to go into a second um, ice water bath uh, right here behind the evisceration station where they're going to be um, ready for cut ups so we've got a nice table here with the uh, cutting boards We're working on clean those up a little bit the cutting boards uh, again, we can have an instructor one place and then we can have students uh, on the other side So we can have an instructor and three students here that are learning the cut-up piece whenever we're parting out for breast wings leg thigh quarters taking backs out um, And that kind of thing So once the cut-ups are done, we'll have some uh, totes. We'll be using some of these uh, some of these lugs um, We'll have some totes here the different parts and pieces uh, like breast will go in a, in a lug leg thigh quarters in a lug um, and then wings and a lug so all the different parts and pieces can go here um, waiting for the package up here we got a couple more stainless tables um, so the folks that are up here <clears throat> doing the packaging they can reach down pull a lug up of breasts leg thigh quarters whatever it is they're doing package those into um, the vacuum seal bags we've purchased an additional uh, VacMaster uh, VP215 um, we've got two of these now that was a choke point for us last year um, so i think that's going to really speed stuff up this year uh, by having two vacuum seal machines again this is a good opportunity for the students to learn all of these parts and pieces the packaging the vacuum seal cut up evisceration you know it's just a it's a natural flow from outside back in evisceration cut ups right up here into packaging once packaging is done, there'll be a couple more lugs here that the, the uh, vacuum seal folks will put the uh, packages into. Then they'll come over here to the final station, uh, which is our uh, weigh and label station. Uh, we'll weigh the packages, put the labels on, price, and then we'll have some coolers over here in the side. And as those coolers are getting finished, or as those coolers are filling up, they'll be ready to pick up and take to uh, the cooler or the freezer, wherever we're going with those. <clears throat> plenty of room in here for some coolers and that kind of thing so I think that's going to be um, a little better setup than we had last year so again we've we've increased our space by about a third uh, of what we had last year I think it's going to be a great environment for folks that are uh, coming to learn how to process their, their own chickens um, and then also think it's going to be a good setup for us on those production days whenever we're trying to run through 120, 150, 200 birds. It's gonna give us a much better flow in terms of our, our work to get stuff done. So lots of new upgrades, we're excited about this.
good stuff. So I want to talk just a little bit about the class um, and kind of how this, uh, how this thing's going to work. So whenever the students get here, uh, first thing uh, tomorrow morning, we're going to have just a small continental breakfast, uh, some coffee, juice, muffins, and that kind of thing for folks um, to kind of get settled in. And uh, then we're going to go out on pasture and kind of look at some chickens that we've got out in some tractors. Uh, we'll have a chance to talk about daily moves, feed regimen, breeds, hatcheries, all that kind of stuff related to sourcing and growing um, those chickens out on pasture. We'll come back. Uh, we've got some chickens in the brooder. So we'll take a look at a brooder. We'll talk about brooder operations um, and some things to think about uh, on brooder care, brooder management, uh, and making sure that your chicks do well in the brooder. Then we'll take a little bit of break, a little bit of a break, and then we'll come in and we'll actually start doing the processing piece. Um, we've got enough birds and we're limiting the class um, to small groups of folks because, you know, the space is much better than it was, but it's still not a very big room. So it's going to be kind of crowded in here with folks working elbow to elbow. But we want folks to have the opportunity to do um, as much of any part piece uh, or uh, section of this um, chicken processing that they want to do again so that whenever folks go home they can feel comfortable uh, about processing their own birds um, on their own farm we do have nice equipment but we've also um, we're also going to show folks how to use just a manual scalder just a hot pot um, and dip those birds by hand um, we've got one of those little pluckers um, that goes on a drill so we're going to fo show folks how to use that but we really don't want folks getting too concerned about equipment as much as just learning the process, how to be efficient and effective in processing your birds so that it's not a big chore uh, or a big, you know, ordeal for you. Um, Son and I lament about it all the time. The first set of birds we done, I think there were 30 chickens. Um, we had never done it before. And it took us, we started about seven o'clock that morning. We were still packaging chicken about 11 o'clock that night. We were ready to swear off birds and swear off doing pasture poultry all together but uh, since then uh, we've improved and figured out how to how to build a better mouse trap and and do this a little bit better this is our first class i've got two more scheduled uh, for uh, the month of june i'm gonna put a link in the description down below so if you're interested in coming out and learning uh, about how to do uh, your own processing on your own farm or homestead uh, we'd love to have you again lots of opportunity to uh, do every part of the of the uh, processing Folks are going to get to take a chicken home, uh, ready for your pot, your barbecue grill, your fridge, your stew pot, however you want to do that. Uh, folks, so folks are going to get to take a chicken home. And then also, <clears throat> we're providing a farm-to-table meal, again, with everything from either right here on the farm or locally sourced um, from right here uh, in southern Guilford County where we're at. So if you're interested in learning how to process your own birds on your own farm, link is in the description down below. Go over, sign up for those classes. We've got a few slots left in the early June class and then the the late june class we just have put that together so if you're interested in doing that sign up come on come on out we'd love to see you and uh, we'd love to help you get ready to process birds on your own farm so we're we're a little nervous about this um you know we feel like folks are entrusting us um with their time we got some folks coming all the way from georgia um alfredo georgia i think it is coming all the way from georgia to learn how to do this here on our farm so we're a little bit uh um yeah we're a little bit nervous about this we want to make sure that folks get good value for their time and their money um, to come up here and spend time with us on our farm to learn how to do this uh, for themselves so under the gun a little bit of pressure um think we can uh, think we can deliver the goods i uh, think we'll be able to give folks some good information and get them ready to uh to do this on their own farm so you know spend a lot of time a lot of effort uh, trying to get this ready um fingers crossed this will go well anyway rambled enough i'm gonna post a link to a couple other videos over here other stuff we got going on um got some maybe some sad news about big mom we're still trying to figure out what's going on there um but anyway we'll do a video on that coming up here pretty soon but anyway if you've not subscribed hit that subscribe button follow along with us we appreciate y'all watching we'll see you on the next video thanks